Hey guys, salut, it's Alex. So welcome to this second episode of the Sourdough Bread Odyssey. The first episode was about how to make our own sourdough starter, but this episode right here is about flour. Number one key ingredient when you make sourdough bread, you will be so much more in control of how you bake after this episode. I knew it. We are never gonna make bread. Never. There's no point in doing this. This is a f what? Just sit back, relax, and don't be so sour. Wheat. In short, there are two main categories of wheat in the world. You've got the uh, common wheat, Triticum aestivum, and you've got Durham wheat, which is known as uh, Triticum Durum. They use Latin name just to sound a bit more legit, but not only for that. It's also uh, very efficient to clear out any confusions and any misunderstanding, which are so widely spread online on blogs, on comments, everywhere. That messy situation is mainly due to the lack of a systematic and global uh, flower classification system. For example, in France and in Italy, common wheat is called soft wheat and durum wheat is called hard wheat because durum basically means hard in latin okay enough with latin but in the u.s hard wheat usually means high protein common wheat where soft wheat usually mean uh, low protein common wheat you see the problem so from now on we'll just consider common wheat as bread mostly is uh, made out of this category now i say we take a look at the kernel of wheat or the wheat berry. So there are three main parts. On the outside, you've got the bran, which is full of minerals and fibers. The main part inside is called the endosperm. Last time he says f now he says f What's the next one? Endosperm. It's rich in starch, so carbs, and protein. Finally, you've got the germ, this small part right here, which is rich in vitamins and good fat. So please keep this all uh, sketch in mind because it's gonna be useful afterwards. Wheat grains or wheat berries are then ground into a flour using a mill. I shouldn't do that. Guess what, of course, you can't make a decent, a proper loaf of bread with the wrong flour. You gotta pick the right flour that suits your baker's need. What you need to know about flour is that they are classified and measured mainly using two uh, numbers. The first one is the ash content and the second one is the protein content. Let's have a closer look. The ash content measures the amount of minerals remaining in the flour after milling the wheat berries. As mineral mostly is on the outside of the wheat berry, uh, the higher the ash content, uh, the more bran and the more outer layers you will get in your flour. It goes from lower than 0.5% for a white and pure and more refined flour. Cake and pastry flours than here. Uh, here you have all-purpose white flour, then you've got bread flour, which is uh, somewhere around here. Then you've got the artisan bread flour, then you've got the light whole wheat, and finally you've got dark whole wheat. From a baker's point of view, I would say the higher the ash content, the more complex flavors you will get, but also the more water you will need. Your best option is often to mix bread flour with a bit of whole wheat in order to get the best of both worlds. Also, if you consider making a sourdough starter, you should always be using an organic uh, whole wheat flour, or at least a 0.8 or 1.1 uh, ash content flour. You want as many nutrients, as many things inside your flour as possible to maximize your chances to get wild yeast and good bacteria. Uh, so before we move on, I want to thank you guys out there supporting me financially on my Patreon page and I really, really enjoy that. It does make a difference. If you want to help too, then click the link at the end of the video and support my work. Now, is that cool if we just step out of my oven? I mean, I like the place, it's cozy and all, but nah, it doesn't look super safe. Ah. Next, the protein. 
content. It's very important for bakers. Uh, in flour you can find many many proteins and some of them uh, known as uh, gliadin and glutenin when they are hydrated and kneaded they can produce gluten. Do you all know about gluten or should I... Uh, we already know the answer to that question. Gluten is like a strong and elastic matrix that holds the air inside the dough when it's fermenting and so producing gas. Um, simply put, the higher uh, protein content in your flour, the more gluten you'll get in your dough at the end. So in terms of value, protein content goes from less than 7% all the way up to more than 15%. This is a low protein content, which is perfect uh, for cookies, for short pastries, you know, when you want to get that crumbly texture. And this high protein content is great when you want to make bread, of course, but also when you want to make pizza, when you want that extra chewy texture. The flour I use to make bread usually stands uh, right here. If protein content gives you a clear indication on how much gluten you can expect at the end, it doesn't say anything about its quality. Mm -hmm. The strength of flour is, in my opinion, a way better indication of a gluten's quality and quantity at the same time. It can be very accurately measured with a number called the W index. However, it's never mentioned on the package, so uh, still you can find the word strong on, on a flour and it means that it has a higher uh, W index so the dough might be more extensible, more elastic at the end. And of course, yes, whenever I can, I use strong flour to bake bread. And the last thing I want to add is that flour can sometimes be treated. Uh, industrial will often use the term bleach flour. They are not exactly using bleach, they could, but in fact they are using, you know, some uh, chemical agent to artificially age and whiten the flour. So I never go for bleach flour. I go for the most natural possible. And even more when I do my sourdough starter, I go for organic. So guys, that's it. I hope you enjoy this second episode of the sourdough bread series. Uh, if you like this video, give it a like, thumbs up and share that over your social media. You know the deal. Spread it like butter. Also, if you have a few comments about flour, maybe your favorite flour. If you have any other questions about what I said in the video, please let me know in the comments. And last people, click subscribe because I make new videos every week. And if it's always, always about food, it's also about getting getting smarter in the kitchen, okay? Until next, bye-bye, salut!